I've just been hanging out with my boy Callum here. It's one of my uh, favorite places to come and walk in the morning. And when I go for a walk, I have a little think. What I've been thinking about recently is tent pegs, tent stakes for our American cousins. If you're a hiker and you're worried about uh, weight in your pack, you know, you like to keep your weight light so you can travel further and do more, as many of us do. Uh, you'll know that tent stakes are, can be surprisingly heavy or surprisingly expensive. And I've been thinking to myself as I'm out on my morning walk with my boy Callum, uh, is there a way I can do it myself lighter and cheaper? So that's what this video is about. It's a bit of a DIY. It's a bit of a make your own gear. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna give it a go. Let's see. So why make your own tent stakes? Aren't the ones that come with your tent good enough? Well, often they're not. The tent pegs that come with your tent are gonna be on the cheaper end. Often they're not as durable materials. They tend to bend, they can be heavy. So if you want decent pegs, you kind of have to buy your own. But do you have to buy your own? Why are tent pegs so expensive? For me, messing with my backpacking gear is a lot like chasing the perfect cup of coffee. I'm endlessly messing with my brew recipe, trying different roasteries and mucking about to dial in the perfect flavour that I like. And to be honest, that experimentation is part of the fun of coffee. Experimenting with my gear is part of the fun of hiking. Well, it's nice actually. I've tried different styles of peg in the past and all of them have their good points and bad points. I'm interested by carbon fiber, but I hear that they're quite brittle. But looking at the design of many carbon fiber pegs out there, I'm not surprised. They use carbon fiber tubes instead of carbon fiber rods. Tubes are really brittle, they flex a lot. Like, it seems like a silly thing to use for a tent peg. So I'm trying solid rods and seeing what that comes out like. But of course, you wouldn't be watching an instructional video on how to make your own tent peg on the cheap, unless it was at least as good as the popular ones on the market. It's dusk, tide's coming in, there's my boy Callum. It's gonna be dark soon, but I wanted to come out and test the peg that I made. Let's see if it's got any strength. So we're gonna head over that way to weather some grass. As we make our way over, here's a prediction. I think the peg will work. I don't think it's gonna be the strongest thing in the world. It's very thin, but it is long. And supposedly, it's length rather than girth that gives pegs their staying power. So I'm hoping it's got something, maybe it'll work as a fair weather peg. Length, girth, peg, there's so many euphemisms in there which we're just gonna ignore, okay? So here at the top of the cliff, we've got some grass. It's been raining the last couple of days, so the ground is soft. That's gonna affect our results. It is your last chance to get your predictions in before we do a very scientific test. Okay, I've got the peg that I made and I've got a fairly standard Y peg. We're gonna put them in at the same angle and then we're gonna pull on them with a little bit of uh, guy line that I've got and we're gonna use this luggage weight thing to see how much force is needed to pull it out the ground. I'm expecting this one is going to do better, but we've got it here just for comparison. The ground's quite soft. 
it's gone straight in. Here goes our peg. I'm gonna say it's much nicer on the hand. One thing about the peg that I've made is you can get it closer into the ground. You've got to have more sticking out the ground with the Y peg just because of the nature of uh, where your rope joins on. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Okay, we'll do the Y peg first. Here we go. And we're beginning to pull. Okay, so that was about about 10 when it started to pull, uh, maybe peaking at 12 as the peg came out. 12 kilograms of force required to pull that peg out of fairly wet ground. So, attaching the same line to my peg, making sure we're starting on zero. And pulling from about the same height. We're at 12, we're at 13, 15, 16. That was 16.3 kilos. That's 50% again on what this one managed. For the sake of argument, we're gonna repeat the test. This time, my peg is going first. At waist height. Twelve kilos, twelve point six five, fifteen, sixteen, and it's out. Nearly seventeen kilos. Oh, here comes a little dog friend. Hello. Jesse. didn't even reach 10. This is no competition. I'm really, really surprised by these results. The pegs are being put in at the same angle. It's the same ground. Both times we tested it, this performed so much better. Here's something else I've noticed. Look at this peg. Look how covered in mud and dirt it is. Now look at my one. It's come out absolutely clean. You all know this feeling of having to clean your pegs before you put them away. Imagine all that extra weight that a dirty peg makes. So, again, another reason why I prefer my one. Yeah, coming out at night to test a peg just because you can't wait for the morning. Yeah, that's the kind of guy I am. If that's the kind of person you are, then you know what to do. Click that subscribe. What a beautiful evening. So there you go. I'm pretty pleased with myself after that test. Let's talk a little bit more around the peg before I show you how to make it. One of the reasons I think it performs so well is because of length. So my peg is 20 centimeters long and because of the design of the top of the peg, you can really use nearly all of that length in the ground, adding extra strength. There's a brilliant video on YouTube, which I will link below, where there's a guy who tests loads of different designs of pegs and finds that length is the main determining factor of a peg strength. So um, it was going, kind of going off of that, that I, designed my peg in the way that I did. It's very, very light because it's made of carbon fiber, but I have seen other carbon fiber pegs around and a lot of them use carbon fiber tubes. I think that's kind of silly because carbon fiber tubes are quite flexible. They're also brittle. I mean, if you've had carbon fiber rods in a tent, you know that they will break eventually. I don't want to be putting lots of tension on that. That just seems like a stupid idea. A solid rod, however, 
is a lot stronger um, and a lot more able to withstand a battering. So I'm using solid rods. So my temp peg separates itself from those in a rather key area. To make this tent peg, you will need 20 centimeter carbon fiber rods that are three millimeters in diameter. You'll need cone cup washers. These ones are aluminium alloy, so they're extra light. You'll need some strips of ordinary paper. You need a bunch of clips and you will need two part epoxy adhesive. Step one is to wrap your piece of paper around your carbon fiber rod. And then make sure it's held in position with a clip. Then we add our washer to the top and adjust the paper so that the washer sits flush at the top of your peg here. Once you have all your pegs ready and waiting, it's time to mix up some epoxy. And this is the fiddliest bit. So you want to make sure the epoxy really runs down the sides so it makes a nice firm bond. Okay, you've seen how they perform, you've seen how to make it. Let's talk about price. A set of six MSR Groundhogs will set you back about 18 pounds. For the same price, you can make eight of mine and you'll have tons of materials left over so that you can make another eight for only additional six pounds in cost to get another set of carbon fiber rods. So my tent stakes are much more affordable. You get more for your money, you get a better peg out of it, and you get the satisfaction of you made something yourself. How about that? Wow, those tent pegs are easy to make and they look good. <laughs> Whatever you thought of these pegs, let me know down in the comments below. And if you make them yourself, I'd love to hear how you get on with them. Finally, if you do make them and enjoy them and you want to show some appreciation, I have a request. If you make them and enjoy them, please consider making a donation to charity. In my day job, I actually work for a charity called Touch Base Care, supporting adults with disabilities. I believe quite passionately in the work that we do. So I'm just going to ask if you appreciate these pegs and you want to show that appreciation, please consider making a donation to Touch Base Care. I'll leave all the information in the description below. Of course, you don't have to. Um, you can just make these pegs and enjoy them. I'm so ridiculously happy that my tent peg worked and not only did it work, it was better than expected. I'm really glad to be able to share that design with you. It's a cheap peg. It's an incredibly effective peg uh, and it weighs next to nothing like what's not to like.